Let's take a look at how the Approvals app in Microsoft Teams can help you manage and stay on top of all of your approvals, from basic things like leave requests, through to policy documents that you might have stored in Teams, right through to being able to automate approval workflows out of your SharePoint lists, model-driven apps, or Dynamics 365 systems. To get started, go to the left-hand rail here in Teams and click on those three dots. Search for the Approvals app and select it there. And then if this is something that you're going to want to use regularly, and I suspect it is, go along here, right click and click pin, and then that will stay pinned to the left hand rail. And what I've got here is a complete list of all of the approvals that I'm working on. You can see I've got three here that have been requested, including one that is marked as urgent or important, and then the history of the other ones that I've approved and rejected. This is me looking at the view of the ones that I've received. I can also see anything here that I've sent out to other people. When these come in, I'll get a notification. We'll have a look at that in a moment. Let's take a look at this one that's come in, a request for a certification handbook. We can see here it's pending a response from me. It's being requested by Dan. There is actually a copy of the handbook document that he wants me to review and I can open that to have a look at it. I can add my comments in here and click approve and then that will go through to Dan. Let's take a look at the experience of requesting an approval like that. Dan can start right here in Teams and click on this new approval request button. And I'm going to show you first the basic request, but we are going to come back in a moment to this templated approvals, which allows you to put a bit more structure around things that you might want to do regularly. Click on basic request. Let's say that he wants approval for a departmental lunch. We can put in who it can be approved by. So let's say this one needs to go to Molly for approval. If you want to have more than one person approving, then you can do something where it's either anybody can approve. So let's say it also needs to go to Lisa because she really needs final approval on everything, doesn't she? So this at the moment is saying everyone has to approve, but in any order, as long as both people have approved. But you can switch that off to say you don't need it from everyone. So the first to approve. And we've also got the ability to have sequential approvals in here. So we could go in and say that we need Molly to approve it first and then Lisa to approve it. Let's just keep this one nice and simple. And we actually just need a single approval here. We can set the priority as either medium or important. I do love that there's no low priority. Nothing's a low priority, right? It's a medium priority. And then we can put some additional details in here about that approval request. You'll see here, we can also add an attachment. So this is something where you can either pick up something from your OneDrive folders, which is actually where your documents in Teams are stored, in case you didn't realize that, upload from your computer, or put in a link to a document anywhere else. And you can actually have multiple documents in here. You just add them all one by one. There's an option in here to have custom responses. So your standard option here is to have approve or reject. But if we toggle this on, you'll see we can add other things in there if you wanna have a different kind of set of responses than just approve or reject. But we will just leave it as that for now and click send. This is now showing up in his sent folder, but that's gone through to Molly. So let's switch across and have a look at Molly's experience here. Molly receives a notification in her feed. I will show you your notification options in a moment because on a personal level, you can set that. We've got all of the information there that Dan put in the request and she can choose to simply with a single click reject or approve or reassign. Let's say this is something where she doesn't have the approval for a lunch of that budget and she is going to reassign it to Lisa who is in charge. We click confirm. And so now that has gone through to the next person who needs to approve it. We'll switch back to my world here where I've got everything. You'll see that I've got my activities here. And now that one has come through originally from Dan, but you can see here that I've got Molly reassigned it to me and I can have a look at it and go, yep, I think that's a great idea. I could add my comments in there and approve that. Now, if you want different settings personally, and I will note here, I am working in Teams in a web browser just because to demonstrate this with multiple personas, it's easier to do that. But this is all exactly the same in Teams desktop app, which is honestly where I'm working most of the time when I'm working in my real environment. But in your settings here, if you go down to notifications, you'll find that there's a section here for approvals, and then you can choose how you want any of those things to come up. I personally find some of those banner notifications a little bit annoying. 
So you can set on a personal level whether you want things to come in the banner and the feed, only show in the feed or off based on how you prefer to work. Now, I did promise you that we would have a look at templated notifications as well, which is great if you've got things where you want to start to control that workflow a little bit more. And then we're going to have a look at automated workflows coming out of other systems. Let's have a look at that experience of creating approvals with a template where you want to do things that are a little more structured. And then I'm going to show you the fully automated way of doing this out of your other systems. So we've done the basic request. I'm going to click this time on creating a template. Take me to creating a template. And you'll see that we've got some templates for the templates in here, which is always a good way to start. I'm going to click here and click on new template and you'll see we've got quite a good range of different things to choose from or you can click create from scratch. I'm going to choose a work from home template here just to get started with something a little bit different. So you'll see that this has structured pieces in there, but we can edit and change this or we can use it as it is. So we'll just click next. Firstly, you choose the permission level. So I actually want this to be available to everyone in the organization. I can put a different title on this. So let's say we internally call it a WFH request or something like that. It doesn't have to be exactly the same. You can also change the icon here if you want. So if you see a template you like, you actually have full flexibility to change everything that's in here. We've got different categories that we can work with. So we're going to leave this one in the attendance category. Click next. So now we've got a design that we can bring different pieces in. So we've got the start date, the end date, the reason. We can also add additional questions if you like in here by clicking on this add new button. And this allows you to add choice, text or date columns. And this is exactly the same thing as using Microsoft Forms if you've come across that. So super easy. Checked with local manager already perhaps. And then we can say, yep, let's add the yes or no options. I love that little automated suggestion that happens in there. And now that question is going to be part of our form. Let's click on next. And this is where we can put some of the workflow settings in place. So do we require the person to attach a file for this one? I would think not. Approver option, who is going to approve. So this is similar to what we did before. We can either let the requester enter or we can specify who the approver is, or we can say it would be the direct manager of that person. And that's taking what's going on in the hierarchy that you've got set up in your Azure Active Directory. If the direct manager is missing, then we're going to specify that Lisa is the person who can approve any of those. Again, you've got the option to have custom responses and whether or not you want comments. So you'll see here, you can start to structure out that workflow. Let's give it a preview. So we've got all of this in here with the dates and whether we've checked and so on. Good to go. Let's publish that. And now it's ready for anyone in the organization to use. Let's switch across to Molly here who wants to make one of these requests. So she's going to make a new approval request. And you can see here the WFH request is ready for her to go. You'll see she can't choose who is doing the approval because that's already been determined by the rules. So she can put in work from home Tuesday and she wants to work from home on that date through to that date. She can put her reason in there. And yes, she has already checked with the local manager and click send. So that's a good way to speed up and control the workflow of those approvals in Teams. What about if you've got a SharePoint list, a Dynamics 365 system, and you want to automate approvals based on things that are going on in those systems? And that's where Power Automate comes into the picture here. I start here, I click on Create to create a new flow. And what I want here is an automated cloud flow because it's based on a trigger that happens in one of those systems. If I'm working with SharePoint, I can say when an item is created in SharePoint and simply link to that. If I'm working with a model driven power app or Dynamics 365, I want to search for a Dataverse connector because that's the name of the database that's underneath those systems. So we want when a row is modified. And so we can say new account approval or whatever we want this flow to be called and click create. From there, you've got a workflow that starts with a trigger, either Dataverse, SharePoint or whatever other system you're using. So in this case, we want this change to be when something is added. We're looking at the accounts table and this will be across the whole organization. So whatever system you're using, you're going to set up that definition of your trigger 
and then to make the approval action happen we just click on that we type approvals and the one you want here is start and wait for an approval you can choose the approval type do you want everyone or the first person to respond or do you want to put those custom things in here and then you'll see we've got information in here that we can fill in. So we've got the title and this is where we can start to bring in dynamic text that came from the trigger. So we can say new account approval and then bring in the account name for instance that came from that dynamics trigger. We can specify who it's assigned to either by a piece of data that has come out of that trigger as well, perhaps the account owner or the person that it was created by, or we can just put in a static value of someone who's always going to approve these requests. You can put in the details of the text and other things that you want in there, as well as some of those other rules, and then you save and you're good to go, and that will automatically happen all of the time. Just note that the first time you do this, it will actually need to automatically install the approvals solution inside your environment. So it can take 15 minutes or so to run, but then you never have to wait that long again. There's a lot more that you can do with these automated approvals out of Model Driven Apps and Dynamics 365. And I've got tutorials here that can take you through that in a lot more detail if you'd like to know more. Thanks for watching.